the big thing is, is that when you buy a new personal watercraft, you, your dealership should have a new um, YUASA battery. Um, that's a that's a pretty standard power sports battery. Okay, that is a that's what they call an AGM battery. Okay, uh, that's an uh, um, that's an abs absorbent glass matte battery. AG, uh, uh, AGM. All batteries are still lead acid batteries. Um, the old batteries used to have little walls, little partitions that were surrounded by battery acid. And the new ones have the same kind of walls in them, but they're surrounded by fiberglass. Okay. And that absorbent glass mat is what they're talking about. And so maintaining that battery. Now, here's here's the sad part because it gets expensive, is that the average battery life for any power sports battery, and I'm talking ATV, side-by-side, -side, snowmobile, typical average life is bet between three to five years. So a um, couple things, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of overlap with other stuff that I've told you, is um, they always harp on make sure you have a clean battery. For your personal watercraft, we're concerned with moisture and corrosion, okay? Because the inside of your engine compartment is gonna is is super humid. It gets super heated. That moisture starts to separate and settle out of the air onto all your terminals and all that kind of fun stuff, and that can quickly corrode the terminals on your battery. A bad battery connection is a, is not only a quick way to not get a charge. It's also a way to develop high resistance so that your generator isn't recharging your battery while it's being operated. So make sure your terminals are beautiful, but keep your terminals clean. Um, try to keep the moisture off of them. That's another reason why I recommend um, using a good uh, water wicking uh, oil when you're finished, you know, when you mist down your engine compartment after you've cleaned off your ski, you take your seats off and you lightly mist the engine compartment. Then you take your WD-40 or you take your Yamalube or your, XP your XPS and you spray it all down, including your battery terminals. Yes, including your battery terminals. And that's going to help wick and draw that moisture and that water away from your battery terminals. So that was really number one. Number one, clean dry, corrosion-free battery terminals. Um, another thing that uh, I have, in, you know, because like the, the, like the quads or the side-by-side -side guys, you know, when they wash their, their, their vehicles off is they often disconnect the battery and let it dry and make sure the tray is dry because if the battery tray is full of water, that moisture is going to play hell on your battery as well. Um, and it can seep in, it can corrode, it can eat away at your battery. So another thing, if you do feel like your battery tray might be full of water, you can pop it off. It's not going to hurt your ski. Take the two terminals off, pull the battery, you know, take the bungee cord off, take the battery out, take an air hose or your leaf blower, whatever you want to use, blow out the tray if you want to take these extra steps. Put your battery back in, hook up your terminals, you should be fine. All right, number two, and that is getting a very good battery tender or a effectively a three-stage charger. And these are, um, uh, C-Tech makes a very popular one that is um, absolutely one of the best uh, that I've encountered because it's got automatic shutoffs. It's not going to overcharge your battery. It's not going to. It's not going to harm it. You can leave it hooked up for months at a time. It's not going to hurt it. That is, keeping that charge is absolutely imperative to the life of your battery. If you let your battery die, you're even if you even if you put put it back on a charger, and if you just try to jump it and charge it and charge it, charge, you know, bringing a dead battery back to life. Even if it does have some signs of life, it's never going to have the same lifespan 
that it would previously. All right. If you let it die, you're effectively killing almost half of the battery's life. How much how much juice it's able to hold and for how long. So never let it die and go get yourself a good battery tender. Okay. So that is number two is battery temperature. Battery temperature is something that a lot of people kind of neglect or forget about or don't even consider is batteries really don't like being below freezing. Uh, the acid in the battery doesn't have the same freezing point as water, but moisture and other factors, it quickly depletes the charge in a battery. So here is a, a couple suggestions. If you cannot store your watercraft indoors, where it's above freezing, it's above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, um, if, if you just can't, get the battery out of that ski, keep it in the garage. If you're not comfortable doing that, but you can bring your ski close to the garage or to the side of the house where you have a socket, there is... Um, Battery tenders do not keep the temperature up, okay? I've seen guys who tuck their battery tender inside of the engine compartment. They're charging their battery, and then they've got their ski covered up, and it's covered in a foot of snow, and they think they're in good shape. Absolutely not. Absolutely no go, all right? Take that battery out, put it in the garage, and if you want to keep it in good shape, keep a charge on it, pull it off, Put it on the shelf, rotate out your batteries, whatever you have to do. Um, but do not let it out in the freezing cold for very long. Just don't do it. It, it kills your battery's life like dead, <laughs> big time. So that is, um, that's part one of this third part. The second half of that, and this is something that I've never had to use, and this is something that I was introduced to over the weekend when I was doing a little bit of homework on this one, was battery heaters. It, it can either go on top. I've, I've seen one that goes on top, kind of like a blanket. And then I've seen one that goes underneath it and heats it from the bottom and keeps it warm. And just plugs into the wall and put it on an extension cord and keep the battery warm if you can't keep the battery in the garage. And that was something, you know, you might have the ski in a barn or in an outdoor shed or something to that effect. And um, that works too. This was a little different was uh, um, they, also, uh, they also recommended that not having a battery in prolonged over 120 degrees temperature. So specifically for our friends in Arizona, <laughs> who do ride where it gets blistering hot. Um, don't keep it inside. Don't keep a battery inside of your truck or inside of the toolbox. You know, you might have a storage box or cargo box on the, in, in the bed of your truck that just turns into an easy bake oven. Don't keep them in there because you can blow a battery real fast. They'll pop their tops. So um, that is uh that is something that I strongly recommend. Not so much in that's, I mean, we're talking about winter, you know, winterizing. So I kind of laugh about the whole, like, Hey, keep your battery out of, you know, out of your truck in the heat. But if I'm talking about temperature, strongly want to make sure that you, you, you keep it within that threshold of 120 degrees, you know, never at 120 or above and never below 32 degrees. And this is Fahrenheit because I'm an American and screw the metric system. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. This clip was taken from our weekly podcast that we record here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to watch the whole video, you can go to the Watercraft Journal's YouTube channel, go to playlists, and then click on live sessions. You're going to see it there. Otherwise, go ahead and leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe to the channel. It helps us grow. And again, thanks again for watching our videos, and we hope to see you soon.